Hi, my name is David Reed, and I'd like to show you uh, some of the physics behind melting metal in a white toy field. Can we even do that? Well, we need to overcome some problems first, uh, like metal reflects microwaves. Um, so how are we going to get the energy into it? Now the secret here is a susceptor. Uh, one you know and love, of course, is water. I mean, it, it pulls in microwaves and gets hotter. Um, it's because it's got asymmetrical molecules and uh, these resonate under the, under the wave and pick up the energy. It's a bit like a child on a swing. If uh, tiny inputs are made at the right time, um, the rhythm of the inputs has to match the period of the pendulum and the swing gets bigger, let me say. Other molecules are We'll take that, uh, that can take higher temperatures, of course, um, can do the same. Now, here's one you can find on our western beaches sand. But if we take the sand and put it to a magnet, we can extract magnetite. Now, magnetite will absorb microwaves, uh, but only at higher temperatures, like things at about above 400, um, 400 degrees Celsius. Okay. So how can, we, how can we use this material? Well, what I do is um, I make a ceramic crucible. Now incorporated in the, one of the layers of that ceramic crucible is in fact our magnetite. Now, because it won't react at room temperature very well, um, I add a bit of carbon, which does absorb my toys at room temperature. That pushes up the uh, magnetite up to over 400 degrees. It starts to absorb the microwaves and we get uh, well, very good absorption, as you'll see. So, we have our domestic microwave to play with. Um, we have to modify it slightly. We'll have taken out the plate for a start, done the rotation. Also, we have a problem where we have little holes in here which let air from the magnetron through to blow away the steam. Uh, a bit of um, tape. We'll fix that, so a bit of tape just goes on over that area. Fix that, and uh, we have a block in there which is um, ceramic fiber block basically. It's luckily a transparent microwave, so it doesn't absorb any of the microwaves in the system, which is quite nice. Okay, so we can take our crucible, if I can find it, here we go. And here's a crucible we've made, and we can put that. Well, hang on, we've got to put it in the right place. So how can we do that? Well, how can we find out? Inside here, we've actually got a whole lot of uh, uneven microwave energy. Um, that's why we rotate, our, rotate the food when we want to, when we want to uh, cook it, uh, to try and even things out. Um, but it's because we're getting reflections off the walls, and these form what are called standing waves. So we actually get a hot spot here, a hot spot here, a hot spot here, no, no, no an end, a low energy spot here and so all over the place. Now we want to be working in a hot spot so we need to trace where that might be. Here's how we can do it. We can take a piece of polystyrene, we rub on a bit of clay, we take a tiny dribble of water and we dampen the whole thing down like so. Place it into where we hope we might get a hot spot. Place it in the machine Give it 20 seconds. It's a long time. There we go. And what do we have? Well, you can see we're getting a dry spot just here. That's still wet, that's dry. So that means that our hotspot is just there. Okay, so let's put our crucible in that area. So, um, well, I'm gonna put a bit of insulation material on the bottom. This is awesome insulating, of course. I'm gonna use some ceramic fiber wool, which I'm just gonna wrap around the crucible there just to, just to hold the heat in. We don't need very much, as you can see. This is a, a kaolin clay, which has been um, heated up to 1400 degrees Celsius, spun into, into a cloth and uh, into fibres and made into this very insulating material which is transparent to microwaves. We place that there, we just put a lid on top, 
and let's give it oh, a couple of minutes, see how we go. Okay. Now, whoa, straight away we're getting a fairly good pull in of the heat. Okay. The, uh, the magnetite is certainly resonating with the microwave and absorbing very, very strongly and causing our crucible to heat up rather rapidly. It's only about half a kilowatt going in there, so that's, um, that's quite a good concentration of energy. Let's just take it out now and have a look. And you can see it is indeed quite hot. It's got quite hot in one region only. Of course, leaving that longer, the heat would spread and we'd have conduction throughout the whole system. Now, why has this happened? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's very remarkable really, isn't it? Um, we've turned an 11 centimeter wave, the microwave, into heat energy, which is 10 to the minus seven meters. So we've shortened, if you like, the, uh, the wavelength, something drastically quarter, a wavelength exchange or a frequency change, which you've got to put it, um, and have turned up with, um, anyhow, heat losses going into the material. Okay, let's see if we can melt some metal. I've got some bits of silver that's previously used. I've got some new silver there. Whoops, it just escaped. And I've got a bit of carbon, which may help deoxidize and keep, keep the oxides down at least. And one of the reasons I'm using metal of different sizes is that I'm hoping that I will actually get different charges will form under the microwave field and we'll get plasma, we'll get sparks between bits. Now if we get plasma, plasma is a very good susceptor of microwaves. In fact, we'll put microwave energy directly next to the metal where it can be conducted and, and absorbed by the metal. Later on, of course, the uh, susceptor will work on the um, magnetite. That will bring in energy as well and hopefully we will have molten metal. Right, uh, what am I looking for here? We've got that, we've got that. I need that for the base. Let me go in. What do we think is a nice hot spot? Just there. A little bit of a cover on the top just to keep some of the heat in. Give it that. I'm going to give it, well, three minutes, I think. One, two, three. Let's see how that goes. Whoa, we're getting. That is the noise of plasma. That is great. The metal is charging up at different rates on, on those blocks of metal. We're getting sparking between, and the microwave energy is actually going zooming straight into that plasma, which is giving us, uh, well, very good heat pickup right on the metal. It'll probably fade away in a while, and the, uh, the rest of it will take over. But good to see the plasma. It's a uh, nice way to go. And I've prepared a small mould here where I just pour in to get a block of silver back here later. And I may even pour some into some water. We'll see how we go. Um, I've got myself prepared when using molten metal. Uh, always use eye protection. Um, metal will bounce off your skin, um, but it won't bounce off your eyes. So <laughs> always be very careful about such things. How are we doing in there? Looking good, we've just got to wait our time now. For a closer view, things are right toasty in there. And we've had two minutes now.
There's the Abbey Beep. Let's see what we've got. Yes, we have molten metal. Now, like I said, we should be uh, using safety gear, but there's the molten metal. Quite a good mold. Maybe it's time to put it into there. You can see the water has a huge heat capacity. There's no chance of it boiling with that amount of metal. There we have it. Very nice. Right, well, I hope that's been interesting. Um, it's shown a few principles. We've, we've seen a bit of plasma. We've seen uh, absorption of different materials with microwaves. And um, we've seen you can, in fact, uh, put metals in a microwave and melt them if you require. Thanks.